Chapter 7 to 12. You can see what looks to be a small child sitting on the plains. He is wearing no upper clothes, but his lower body is encased in what looks to be animal hide as pants. His appearance resembles a monkey with all the fur covering his body as well as the tail that he has. He has hair similar to Super Saiyan Goku's, but of course not golden. But one of the captivating characteristics about him would be his eyes, pupils colored red and as dark blood. Sage this is far more difficult than I would have liked. Even after three years of meditating, I can only keep control of five key orbs. Thinking that you see Sage sitting on the ground with five key orbs floating around him with his body as the center. A second later you can see what looks like a sixth key orb form. After Sage adds the sixth key orb, he starts sweating, and within a minute, the key orbs start to deform before exploding. Destroying the ground in a circle, and leaving Sage with a lot of bruises from the impact. Sage, dash damn, that hurt. It seems I can at best control five key orbs fluently. But what about in battle, when my focus is distracted, will I still have that much control? Thinking about stuff like that I look up into the sky, wondering how my first battle will be. Will it be tough? Will I die? Will my enemy die? Thinking about fighting, I can feel my heart pounding in excitement at the prospect of fighting. Sage not only is my body craving for a fight, but so am I. I really can't wait, but my father said I can only fight when I have passed the baby's growth period. When will that be over with? While staring into the sky and about to go to sleep, I suddenly felt key rivaling my own. I stand up tense ready for a possible battle, when I try to focus on the key, I find it feeling familiar and calm down realizing it's my mother. Zuxi, dash Sage. Hurry up it's lunchtime. Sage, dash, coming mother. Replying to my mother quickly, I stand up and dust myself off and start running in the direction of my mother. What? You thought I could fly? Nope, I have never tried, I mean I want to try and fly, but I am scared that if I use too much key and launch myself into orbit before I figure out how to stop myself I will have already died from lack of oxygen. So I decided I will learn to control my key before I try dangerous stuff like flying. After a few minutes of running, I came across our little home as my parents call it, but it's just a cave with a few different rooms inside. Sage, dash mom. Dad. I'm here, what's for lunch? Is it bore again? Onan, dash, we are inside. Hearing the answer, I walk deeper into the cave and come to find my mother and father eating already. Sage, dash, you guys are going to eat all of it before I can get any. Saying that I hurry and grab a huge chunk of meat that is probably half my size and start eating it quickly, drinking water whenever I need to, so I don't choke. Zuxi, dash, ha ha ha. Then you should be quicker next time. It's not my fault you were slow. Onan, dash, your mother started eating first and I wasn't just going to watch her eat all the food I hunted. Hearing the answers from my parents I just look at them blankly. Now that I think about it, my parents are weird. Let me rephrase this thought, my parents are weird for science. Not only do my parents love each other, which is very hard to find considering almost all science only care about fighting and their strength. They are like completely different beings altogether. Take my mother for example. She has a hot-headed personality, she loves fighting more than most science apparently, and she is cruel when it comes to battle. How do I know this, well when I was still getting breastfed I would overhear my mother talking about the battle she fought and she would smile whenever she went into detail about her enemy's screams when torturing them. Now my father. He is calm and cool-minded, which I find very surprising considering he is a scion. He enjoys fights, just not as much as my mother. But most importantly, I found out that my father is very good at reading people's thoughts through just their expressions alone. Apparently because of that talent he is knowledgeable in a lot of different subjects. But the one thing I know that they have in common would be their affection for me. And I love them too, but I know a lot of scions don't have good family relationships so I get thankful thinking my parents love me. Onan, dash all right, sage me, and your mother have decided that it is time for you to start receiving training. My father snapped me out of my thoughts. Hearing what my father said, I just looked at him so excitedly that I unconsciously wagged my tail back and forth, thinking that I could finally fight. So in a happy mood, I hurriedly asked them. Sage, dash, does that mean I can fight those beasts now, dot. Zuxi, dash, nope. Hearing that my happy mood vanishes, while my tail slumps onto the ground beside me. Zuxi, dash, we said training not battle you're still a few years too young. So before that, I and your father shall train you, before we allow you to battle those beasts. Hearing what my mother said I regained some of my happiness and asked them when training would start. Sage, dash, so when will my training start? 
Zuxi dash right now. Saying that I see my mother pick me up by my arm and fly in another direction. After my mother has flown for a couple of minutes I notice that it is getting harder to breathe and the gravity seems to have increased as well. Another few minutes later, my mother lands and throws me a few meters in front of her. I try to stand up, but I notice it's far harder than before, after a minute I manage to stand up, but I am out of breath. The air here is really thin, so it's really hard to get any oxygen into my lungs, and to top it all off the heat is practically unbearable. I have only been here for one or two minutes, but I am already sweating. Looking up I see my father standing next to my mother while they are both looking at me. Onan, dash, let me check how much his power has grown. Saying that I watch my father walk over to the space pod that he brought over. After fiddling around my father walks back and you can hear the space pod scanning me. Scanning. Target scanned, power level. 40,000. While that may look high, don't forget what I am. For me an increase of 15,000 in only 3 years is pathetic. But then again I have never trained to get stronger. I have been focusing on mastering the basics of key, which I can confidently say I have succeeded in these 3 years. Onan dash asterisk whistle asterisk an increase of 15,000 and you haven't even started training yet. Imagine what the increase will be after training for a year. Zuxi dash ha 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 ha. That is my son, so powerful and hasn't even trained a day in his life. That so-called super elite Prince Vegeta could never compare to my son. Hearing them talk about me like that makes me a little happy, and I am excited to see the results after training for one year. Sage dash so who will be training me first? Onan dash first you must get used to the gravity and climate, then we will officially start your training, do note though this gravity is only 4x what you are used to. Hearing what my father said I do some quick calculations and realize this is about 400x times earth gravity. I know you must be thinking it's a lot considering Goku could barely even stand on King Kai's planet, and that planet's gravity is the same as planet Vegeta's. But you must understand I am an ancient legendary scion so my physique far outclasses a normal science, and besides I was born on the sector of the planet with gravity 10x planet Vegeta so a 4x increase of what I am used to will be quite easy to adapt to. Now here comes some tough training. Sage hee hee hee, I am so excited. Sage it's been about two days since I have been tossed over here, and I have already adapted to the new gravity. The extreme heat, while highly annoying, is bearable, but the real problem is the lack of oxygen in the environment. I am also pretty sure there are some other toxins in the environment, making it painful every time I try to take a breath of air. Having nothing to do except get my body acclimated to the harsh weather, I sit down and try my best to hide or lower the amount of key that radiates off me. Since I already have a basic grasp of my key, it wasn't too hard to lower my key to 10% which is about 4000 of my current power. Trying to go any lower though has proved to be exponentially harder, and I have a feeling that completely trying to hide my ever-growing key will be impossible or at least close to it. After what I think is a few hours I stood up and powered up to 100% and stayed like that to see how long I can maintain full power. After what I assume is about 10 minutes I notice that I have gotten a little tired but nothing that would interfere with fighting. About another 10 minutes later I feel exhausted but I know I can go further. So after 5 minutes, I am sitting on the ground panting for breath, which hurts, so that sucks. Sage I think that was about 25 minutes that I can go full power for, without exerting myself. If I was in battle I think I would only be able to fight at 100% for half that time, but with more training and better key control, so I don't waste key and key attacks the time will naturally go up. A few minutes later I got up, ate some food, and went to sleep. I was really tired after doing those exercises. Several hours later I was interrupted from my peaceful sleep by a kick in the back which kinda hurt. Zuxi dash you need to always be alert and aware of your surroundings, even when resting. If I was an enemy you would already be dead. Standing up and rubbing my back I look at the culprit for waking me up in the middle of my sleep. Looking at my mom with an annoyed expression I just nod back. Sage dash yes mom. So why are you here mother? Zuxi dash what? Did you think this was a vacation for you? Seeing how fast you stood up it looks like you have adapted to the enhanced gravity. Since that's the case, come here and get ready, it's time for your training to officially begin. Hearing what my mother said I immediately got into a fighting position to not get caught off guard again. Seeing this, my mother smirks and gets into position while smiling. We just stand there staring at each. Suddenly, my mother makes a move and appears in front of me in a striking position. Seeing this I was immediately caught off, 
knowing I didn't have enough time to dodge, I crossed my arms preparing for the impact. After waiting for a second and not feeling any impact I open my eyes and find nobody in front of me, but a second later I hear my mother. Zuxi, dash never, close your eyes in a battle. Keep your eyes on the enemy at all times. After I hear that I take a powerful hit to the back of my head, almost knocking me out. I skidded across the ground for a while before I pushed myself up. Now irritated at having been attacked from the back, I go on the offensive. Running towards my mother, I throw right hook after left hook, but she just dodges or blocks them all with ease. While this was happening something of a smile had formed on my face, of course, I didn't know it at the time because I was too irritated and engrossed in the fight to notice. But my mother saw me smiling while I was fighting her. Zuxi smiling while fighting, he reminds me of myself. Seeing how my mother seemed to have enough time to daydream while fighting me made me mad. So after throwing a right hook to her left side, which she obviously dodged. After the punch, I jumped and aimed a kick at her chest, which she blocked. Sage just what I was hoping for. Kicking off her crossed arms, I do a backflip and land about 4 meters away from her. My mother, seeing how I have put some distance between us, seems to get a little cautious. Smiling, I close my hands together in front of me. Slowly my hands start to spread apart, but there is a glowing light red key ball in my hand, it continues to expand until it is about the size of my head. I am also sweating a lot, keeping the ball filled with almost all of my energy is a very strenuous thing to do, but I am smiling seeing how I pulled it off. I look at my mother who is in a defensive position, like she is ready to take my attack. Seeing this I lift my right arm up and then throw my attack at my mother while yelling the name of the attack like everyone in Dragon Ball Z does for some reason. Sage dash galactic burst. My key ball travels fast and expands right in front of my mother's face, and a split second later a huge explosion erupts right where my mother was standing. Panting, I smile while thinking I might have at least injured her, but suddenly I hear my mother's voice from behind me. Zuxi, dash, that was a pretty good attack, but you shouldn't have poured all your energy into one attack, hoping that it would hit your enemy. After hearing what mother said I immediately felt pain on the back of my head, before I blacked out. After knocking my son unconscious I grab him by the leg and fly to the camp he made and set him down. While thinking of the fight I just had, I must say I am impressed that he not only kept up with me but managed to create and use such a powerful attack at the age of 3. I already know that future fights with my son will become more and more exciting. One of them is a woman with spiky hair and a tail, and she appears to be wearing armor. The other person is a small child that looks to be about 5 or 4 years old, he's wearing nothing but some animal hide pants. They have been flying around in the sky and fighting each other for several minutes, but they do not look like they are about to stop anytime soon. After 10 minutes, the women launched a big key wave towards the boy, who blocked the attack but was pushed to the ground, and then some before the key wave finally dispersed. Jumping out of the crater, I look to find my mother sitting on the ground, panting for breath nearby. Walking over to her, I sit right beside her and start eating some of my leftover food, offering some to my mother. Sage, dash, mother, do you want some food? Zuxi dash ha ha ha. Yeah, give me the biggest piece of meat you got. Hearing my mother's response, I look over to my pile of cooked food and grab a piece of meat about the same size as me and hand it to my mother. She hurriedly starts eating, and within two minutes, she has already finished the meat, but she doesn't look satisfied yet. Zuxi dash, you have improved a lot during our training that your strength has already surpassed mine, so much that you need to suppress it so we can train. Sage, dash, but mother haven't you gotten stronger too during our training as well? Zuxi, dash yes I have, but not nearly as much as you. Your growth and talent for fighting are ridiculous. Hearing what my mother said, I think back to all the training we had gone through. After I had woken up from getting knocked out from my first time fighting her, I immediately asked mother to fight again. The second time we fought I noticed my power had increased, not by much, but probably by 10%, so in turn, 4,000. I also lasted far longer than before, and I didn't get knocked out, mother just beat me up until I couldn't move. But that's beside the point. The real improvement I made, before my mother beat up so bad I couldn't move for a few hours was, that I managed to land a couple of punches on my mother. And now that it has been about one year of constant training and fighting I can finally fight my mother to a draw with technique and instincts alone. Of course, my power level has increased tremendously because of the training, to be honest, I think it should be around Captain Jinyu's level right now. But I have found a problem during our training, I get easily angered, it seems that being an ancient legendary scion has some drawbacks other than just the chaotic key I was born with. 
Zuxi, dash, seeing as you can fight to a draw with me, from now on you are allowed to fight those beasts, just be careful. Hearing my mother, I snap out of my thoughts and get excited at the thought of actually being able to have a proper battle. Sage, dash, yes. Thinking about all the beasts I will battle and how much fun I will have, I suddenly realize something very important. All this time I never once tried to turn into an Ozaru and knowing how the increase should be more than when a normal scion transforms into an Ozaru. Thinking that I turn and ask my mother for help. Sage, dash, hey mother, can I try to turn into an Ozaru, I have never done it yet. My mother hearing this also thinks about the idea. Zuxi, dash, yes, it's about time for you to finally turn into an Ozaru. As you are my son, you must know how to control your Ozaru and not just a wild beast. Zuxi, dash, wait here I shall tell Onan to bring the space pod. After saying that, my mother picks up her spare scouter and calls my father. About 10 minutes later, I see my father just over the horizon while carrying a space pod. Me and my mother see him, so we flew over to my father. Onan, dash, so you finally let him turn into an Ozaru. If that's the case, let's check his power first and see how much he has improved. Scanning. Target scanned, power level, 135, 000. My parents hearing that look at me surprised, and then my father smiles while my mother is laughing. Even though it's my power they seem to show more pride in the improvements than me. Zuxi, dash ha ha ha. That's my boy, only 4 years old and already so powerful. My boy's a true scion. Ha ha ha. Onan, dash so high, you're already so powerful and you haven't even hit your one growth phase. Okay dear seeing how much our son has improved, you better have something to show as well. Saying that my father scans my mother, while my mother looks expectant at how big her increase in power will be. Scanning. Target scanned, power level, 55, 000. My mother hearing the results clicks her tongue and looks slightly disappointed at her power. Zuxi, dash TSK. I was hoping for a bigger increase than 15,000. Anyways we didn't come here to check my power, we came so sage, can transform into an Ozaru. After my mother says that, I fly a couple of hundred meters away from the space pod. A few seconds later I see a moon appear in the sky. Looking directly at the moon I can feel my heartbeat pound and each time louder than before until it eventually sounds like bombs are going off. I also start to feel my body heating up and growing bigger, my body is now completely covered in fur except my face. While transforming, I start feeling anger, rage, and hate come out of nowhere. I try my best to contain it and stop it from corroding my thoughts, but I only manage to last a minute before my mind is overtaken by foreign emotions. The last thing I remember is letting loose a colossal roar that shook the very ground. Sage, dash, R O A R I watched my son fly a couple of hundred meters away from us so that when he loses control, we will have enough time to leave the vicinity and not get caught up in Sage's rampage. Turning on the moon projector, me and Zuxi look away from the sky so we don't turn into an Ozaru as well. A few seconds later, I start to hear heartbeats, even from a distance of hundreds of meters. Hearing this I frown, thinking that this is abnormal. Own on these heartbeats. They are far louder than any scion I have ever heard before in fact, none of them even come close. Turning to my wife I find that she seems oblivious to the heartbeats. Looking forward again I see Sage slowly transforming and growing in size from his original 1 meter in height to 3 meters, 5 meters, 9 meters, 13 meters, 19 meters, 20 meters. Seeing him reach the size of an Ozaru, I thought he was done growing, but I was surprised when he continued to grow beyond the limit of an Ozaru. 21 meters, 24 meters, 28 meters, 31 meters, 35 meters. He finally stopped growing, seeing him stop I used my scouter to scan his height. Scanning. Target scanned. 35 meters. Hearing my scouter speak Zuxi responds astonished just as much as me. Zuxi, dash 35 meters tall. Do you think him being born with a mutation is why his Ozaru form is so big? Hearing Zuxi's question, I was about to answer her, when Sage let out a roar so loud and powerful that even from such a distance, the force was enough to push me and Zuxi at least 200 meters from where we were standing. We had to power up to resist the force, but even then it was difficult and we were constantly losing ground. Zuxi, dash, doesn't, Sage, seem, a lot, stronger, than, just, a 10x, increase, or is it, just me? Hearing my wife struggle, to speak, even I have to agree with her logic. A power level of 1.35 million shouldn't be this devastating, or at least I think it shouldn't, 
I have never interacted with a being that has a power level of 100, 000 plus before Sage was born, let alone 1 million. Several seconds later the roar finally stopped, seeing this me and Zuxi powered back down and watched our son go into a frenzy. Seeing that Sage was not in control, I flew behind me to the space pod that was flung away by the roar. Getting to it, I turned off the projector and was expecting my son to slowly transform back into his natural form, but after a few minutes, I see no signs of his rampage stopping. Thinking that the space pod might be malfunctioning from the damage it just took, I look up into the sky half expecting a false moon to be in the sky, but looking up I see nothing but a yellow sky, and some stars in space shining down on the planet. Zuxi dear. Are you going to turn off the projector or just stand there looking like a dumbass? Hearing my wife yell at me, I turn to look at her and point to the sky. My wife, seeing my gesture, looks confused before looking into the sky and looks surprised that there is no false moon. She looks back at me even more confused than before. Onan, dash don't look at me like that, my guess is as good as yours dear. It most likely has to do with his mutation. Since he won't transform back again, let's just leave him be. Of course, knowing your personality you might just want to fight him. Saying that I pick up the space pod so Sage doesn't obliterate it while he is going on his rampage. Flying away, I see Zuxi catch up with me looking annoyed, Zuxi seeing no change in my face just snorts and flies ahead of me. Zuxi dash humph. Opening my eyes, I groggily stood up. Looking around I find myself in a big crater, confused. I try to remember what happened when I am hit with a massive headache forcing me to grab my head in pain. While doing so I see some memories of destruction and hear a lot of loud roaring going on. After a few minutes, the headache goes away and I finally remember that I turned into an Ozaru. Sage, dash it seems I lost control, not like I expected to control it on my first attempt. But why did my head hurt so much trying to remember what I did? Onan, dash don't worry about it. It always happens the first few times transforming, in time you will get used to it. Now put these pants on and come and eat, I'm sure you're hungry from all the mayhem you caused. Hearing my father speak I turn around and find him standing at the edge of the crater, looking down at me. Catching the animal hide pants he threw at me, I put them on and asked father a question. Sage, dash, father, how long was I transformed for? Onan, dash, about five hours. Hearing my father, I stopped eating. Surprised, I looked at him confused. Father just looks at me and answers my question before I even ask. Onan, dash and before you ask, yes I turned off the projector, but it seems like you don't need a constant supply of blutz waves to stay as an Ozaru. You just need enough to trigger the transformation. Sage that must be my ancient scion genes coming into play. Now for this to become useful I must first be able to maintain control when I transform. Thinking about all this I go back to eating until I am full. Making a mental list of what I should do first, I start thinking. Sage for now, I should go and fight some beasts, I need real battle experience, not just training with mother. Then when I have free time, I should transform and try to maintain control for longer than just a minute. Lastly, I need to maintain a daily schedule for meditation to keep my growing power in check, I don't want to accidentally blow a hole through this planet while fighting. Confirming my current goals, I go to a spot that hasn't been destroyed by me earlier, and I start meditating. I watched my son fly a couple of hundred meters away from us so that when he loses control, we will have enough time to leave the vicinity and not get caught up in Sage's rampage. Turning on the moon projector, me and Zuxi look away from the sky so we don't turn into an Ozaru as well. A few seconds later, I start to hear heartbeats, even from a distance of hundreds of meters. Hearing this I frown, thinking that this is abnormal. Own on these heartbeats. They are far louder than any scion I have ever heard before in fact, none of them even come close. Turning to my wife I find that she seems oblivious to the heartbeats. Looking forward again I see Sage slowly transforming and growing in size from his original 1 meter in height to 3 meters, 5 meters, 9 meters, 13 meters, 19 meters, 20 meters. Seeing him reach the size of an Ozaru, I thought he was done growing but I was surprised when he continued to grow beyond the limit of an Ozaru. 21 meters, 24 meters, 28 meters, 31 meters, 35 meters. He finally stopped growing, seeing him stop I used my scouter to scan his height. Scanning. Target scanned. 35 meters. Hearing my scouter speak Zuxi responds astonished just as much as me. Zuxi, dash 35 meters tall. Do you think him being born with a mutation is why his Ozaru form is so big? Hearing Zuxi's question, I was about to answer her, 
when Sage let out a roar so loud and powerful that even from such a distance, the force was enough to push me and Zuxi at least 200 meters from where we were standing. We had to power up to resist the force, but even then it was difficult and we were constantly losing ground. Zuxi dash doesn't, Sage, seem, a lot, stronger, than, just, a 10x, increase, or is it, just me? Hearing my wife struggle, to speak, even I have to agree with her logic. A power level of 1.35 million shouldn't be this devastating, or at least I think it shouldn't, I have never interacted with a being that has a power level of 100, 000 plus before Sage was born, let alone 1 million. Several seconds later the roar finally stopped, seeing this me and Zuxi powered back down and watched our son go into a frenzy. Seeing that Sage was not in control, I flew behind me to the space pod that was flung away by the roar. Getting to it, I turned off the projector and was expecting my son to slowly transform back into his natural form, but after a few minutes, I see no signs of his rampage stopping. Thinking that the space pod might be malfunctioning from the damage it just took, I look up into the sky half expecting a false moon to be in the sky, but looking up I see nothing but a yellow sky, and some stars in space shining down on the planet. Zuxi dear. Are you going to turn off the projector or just stand there looking like a dumbass? Hearing my wife yell at me, I turn to look at her and point to the sky. My wife, seeing my gesture, looks confused before looking into the sky and looks surprised that there is no false moon. She looks back at me even more confused than before. Onan, dash don't look at me like that, my guess is as good as yours dear. It most likely has to do with his mutation. Since he won't transform back again, let's just leave him be. Of course, knowing your personality you might just want to fight him. Saying that I pick up the space pod so Sage doesn't obliterate it while he is going on his rampage. Flying away, I see Zuxi catch up with me looking annoyed, Zuxi seeing no change in my face just snorts and flies ahead of me. Zuxi dash humph. Opening my eyes, I groggily stood up. Looking around I find myself in a big crater, confused. I try to remember what happened when I am hit with a massive headache forcing me to grab my head in pain. While doing so I see some memories of destruction and hear a lot of loud roaring going on. After a few minutes, the headache goes away and I finally remember that I turned into an Ozaru. Sage, dash it seems I lost control, not like I expected to control it on my first attempt. But why did my head hurt so much trying to remember what I did? Onan, dash don't worry about it. It always happens the first few times transforming, in time you will get used to it. Now put these pants on and come and eat, I'm sure you're hungry from all the mayhem you caused. Hearing my father speak I turn around and find him standing at the edge of the crater, looking down at me. Catching the animal hide pants he threw at me, I put them on and asked father a question. Sage, dash, father, how long was I transformed for? Onan, dash, about five hours. Hearing my father, I stopped eating. Surprised, I looked at him confused. Father just looks at me and answers my question before I even ask. Onan, dash and before you ask, yes I turned off the projector, but it seems like you don't need a constant supply of blutz waves to stay as an Ozaru. You just need enough to trigger the transformation. Sage that must be my ancient scion genes coming into play. Now for this to become useful I must first be able to maintain control when I transform. Thinking about all this I go back to eating until I am full. Making a mental list of what I should do first, I start thinking. Sage for now, I should go and fight some beasts, I need real battle experience, not just training with mother. Then when I have free time, I should transform and try to maintain control for longer than just a minute. Lastly, I need to maintain a daily schedule for meditation to keep my growing power in check, I don't want to accidentally blow a hole through this planet while fighting. Confirming my current goals, I go to a spot that hasn't been destroyed by me earlier, and I start meditating. Opening my eyes, I am suddenly hit with pain from all over my body. Laying on the ground and trying not to move to further increase the pain. Sage, dash, uh. Grunting, I try to turn my head to see where I am, checking whether I am in a safe place or not. Looking around I see the familiar cave where I have lived for the past three years. Hearing footsteps, I turn to the entrance of the tunnel and I find both my parents walking in with my mother carrying some food. Zuxi, dash, it seems you have finally woken up. You have been unconscious for a few hours already. After mother says that she sits down beside me and hands me some food. Looking at the food, I try to reach out and grab it only to feel immense pain coming from my arm. Mother, seeing how I can't even move my arms, just rips a piece of meat off and shoves it in my mouth. Almost choking from the meat suddenly in my mouth, I swallow it, coughing afterward. 
Onan, dash, so son, you plan to tell us why you came back, half dead, while carrying a carcass with you. Hearing my father ask that question, I start telling them about my first battle experience. Sage, dash, well what happened was. While fighting that beast I got too absorbed into the fight and kinda of forgot to defend any of his attacks and well you saw what happened. When my father and mother heard my response, they just looked at me and then at each other, before my mother broke down laughing while my father just sighed. Zuxi, dash ha 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 ha. That's my boy. Onan, dash sigh. What's wrong with you two? Listening to them I just lay there wondering why mother was laughing so much. When mother finally stops laughing, she just stands up and leaves with father right behind her. Zuxi, dash, just lay there dear and once you have healed, you will come to find why a science love fighting so much. And with that, I am alone again. With nothing left to do I just decide to sleep, I'll eat when I can actually move my arms. Sage, dash HA. To think it has only taken about two days, for me, to fully heal from those injuries. But the most impressive thing was the Zenkai I received after fully healing up. My strength has at least doubled from what it originally once was. Feeling the big increase in power, I smile while clenching my fist feeling amazed by the amount of strength that I have now. Calming down I realize that with such a big increase in strength, my control over it will have been lessened. Thinking of this I sat down and started meditating. Sage I should learn to control my Ozaru foam first. The more powerful I get the more that the planet will be destroyed while training in my Ozaru form. Sage I wonder what the future will have in store for me. Sage it's been 5 years since my first battle, and over the years I have visited various places and fought hundreds of my battles. I even have several scars as proof of my victories. And I must say I have improved tremendously over the years, I have gained power, fighting experience, and most importantly I have finally managed to take control over my Ozaru form. While Sage was thinking if you looked at where he is you would see a giant 35 meter Ozaru hovering in the air with his legs crossed. Along with a couple of key orbs circling him, all of various sizes from one third of the Ozaru size to tiny pebbles. Opening my eyes I look around me and see all the different key orbs around me. Smiling in satisfaction I absorb the key and land on the ground. Sage dash after all these years I have finally managed to control this transformation. And the funny thing is that I will probably never use such an inconvenient form, the only reason I wanted to perfect this transformation was to be able to use the power of my Ozaru in my base form like Broly while keeping my sanity. After saying that I start slowly transforming back into my normal appearance. Which has had some changes over the years, mainly just my body finally having some muscles and several scars along my back, arms, chest, and one on my cheek. Sitting down I start meditating and I try to channel the power of the Ozaru without transforming into one, after a few failed attempts I finally succeed. Standing up I notice I have the same increase in power when I transform, but this time I won't lose my agility and most importantly I won't become such a giant target. Looking at the changes it gave me I notice that my hair has spiked up in a similar appearance as SSJ2 Gohan's, and my body grew a couple of inches along with a small increase in my muscle mass. Feeling even more satisfied than before I power back down. Looking around I notice that I am in the area where my mother and I used to train together. Sage, dash I barely even feel the gravity here anymore, and to think I used to train here with mother. Speaking of mother. Thinking of my parents I fly towards our cave home, reminiscing about when I was only three, it would take me several minutes to travel. Now I can get home within a few seconds if I so wished. Sage I have come a long way. And I still have a long way to go. Stopping in front of the cave I sense both of my parents inside. Walking in I spot mother sleeping and father messing around with mother's busted space pod. My father, seeing me, stops what he's doing and asks. Onan, dash glad to see you have come back Sage, it's been several months since I last saw you. How has your training gone? Sage, dash yeah it's been a while dad. And my training has gone great the past couple of months, I have finally mastered my Ozaru. But a problem has appeared, I have nothing to fight anymore and while training will improve my power it will be slow. Saying that I sit down and start eating some of the food that hasn't been eaten already, which is a rare thing to happen when three scions live here. Looking up I see that father must be thinking about something when he suddenly asks. Onan, dash, have you gone to the danger zone as you call it yet? Sage, dash not yet. I wanted to perfect my Ozaru transformation first, and now that I have achieved that I plan on going there soon. Now I am sure you're wondering what the danger zone is, aren't you? Well, I shall inform you. Two years ago when I was looking for new places to fight I came across an area that had the highest scanned gravity on the planet, 
which is 100x planet Vegetas. Thinking it would be a good place to train, I was flying deeper into the area when I came across a giant mountain in the middle of a forest. Curious, I scanned the area with my key, and after finding nothing I was about to fly past the mountain. But, that was when my instincts that have saved my life several times before, started screaming at me to turn around. Trusting my instincts that have never let me down I immediately fled the area and since then I haven't stepped anywhere close to that mountain. Still, to this day, I have never felt my instincts warn me so strongly before. But now that I can use the wrathful state or Akari, I decide I will investigate that mountain tomorrow. Finishing the food I head down the tunnel and enter my room, laying down I head to sleep knowing that I will need to be fully prepared for tomorrow's adventure. Sage's new power level, dash, 2.5m. If you want to support me check out my Patreon at https colon slash slash www.patreon.com slash kayashin. I tend to polls that decide important plot stuff in my P at Trian. Many thanks to my awesome patrons. Wilnet Duvern. Ben Phillips. If you liked the content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I'll stay here until next time.